Hey, gun people. Man, this is a great video. Um, a, a, a sad situation, but a really great training and learning for young cops. Um, I always talk about fight or flight and, and the effects of it and how it can totally take over your body during a critical, high-risk, life-or-death incident. So when we talk about fight or flight, and I'll put a link in the description on where to go to it on my website, you can you can go fight or flight, or there's a third one that's freeze. A lot of people don't talk about it. Uh, the best example is a deer when it walks out on the road, a, a deer in the headlights. When a deer sees headlights or a horse or another flight animal, a lot of times they don't run because they can't see. So they don't want to run into danger. They don't want to jump off a cliff. They don't want to run into the mouth of something, so they freeze. Well, in a human, when we get overwhelmed with information and we're trying to gather and do so much and fight or flight kicks in, your heart rate goes up, you get auditory exclusion, you get time distortion, uh, time slows down, you lose minor muscle movements, all the blood rushes away from your fingertips and toes and it moves to your vital organs and your large muscles so you can run or flight and you get a huge adrenaline pump of chemicals. When all that happens in a split second, when you think you're about to die and you start screaming your face somebody with a gun, it can cause a lot of things. This cop goes in to what I would call a panic attack. I'm not a medical. I don't know if it's a classical panic attack. They describe what he goes through as a heart attack or a cardiac event. Now, I'm not sure what the difference between a heart attack and a cardiac event is, but a cardiac event, I'm thinking, is either you know his heart got overwhelmed. And again, when you go into fight or flight, most people's resting heart rate somewhere around... 60, depending on how good a shape you're in, it can be 50. You know, if you're out of shape, it can be up to maybe 80. But 60 is what I usually say is about an average resting heart rate. When you point your gun and you get in a life or death, your heart jumps to 220 beats or higher. And there's a, a lot of physical things that happen when your heart goes that high. Uh, below 220, you don't get like uh, time distortion and tunnel vision. And above 220, you get extreme above two thirty, So a lot of things happen the higher your heart rate. That's why if you're going to be in critical incidents, you need to be in better shape. You need to do cardiovascular uh, or, or cardio exercise so you're in shape, so your, your body can handle the stress. Um, so let's take a look at this video. Uh, it, it goes pretty slow until he has a panic attack, and I'll just stop it and kind of do it. Again, thanks to Police Activity for putting these videos up and information. Um, I'll stop the video as we go and give more information and things I'm seeing. Walk over here. Get your hands up. Walk over here. Don't move. Hey. Okay, so a couple things we don't that you don't know here. Uh, he got responded to an unknown incident at this place. When he got there, he found an elderly woman that was down on the ground, uh, extremely obese, couldn't move. She said when she fell, her daughter took her ID, her phone, so she couldn't call for help, and her prescription meds. So, and when she said it was either her daughter or cousin, this lady's a daughter or cousin, something related to the person found, they ran her and she had a warrant. So when I first saw this, you're going to notice this officer grabs her and say, why are you running? And I'm kind of thinking, dude, that's not really good covering your butt. You're chasing somebody. You're tackling them. You're using force. You ought to have PC. Well, he did have PC. He just didn't state it in the video. So he had all this information. Now you have it, and you'll understand why he's chasing her and why he's tackling her. He thinks she has a warrant. He thinks she just committed a crime. He thinks he just stole from a lady that was down, possibly stole prescription drugs. So there's plenty of PC, but when I just watched a video and I saw him go, why are you running? I'm like, dude, that's not good. So as cops, when you're chasing people, remember, you don't have to articulate it on this video and you don't have to articulate it necessarily for the video, but you need to have justifications if you're going to use force. And this guy had plenty of justification. I got no problem with his use of force now. I did have a little bit at first. Oh, man, he tore her pink shirt. That's a shame. My horse people will be all upset about this one. Get on the ground. Roll over. Roll over.
Okay, people would say that she's not resisting. She is resisting. She's refusing to roll over. She's occupying him. She's keeping him distracted. He's got it. He, he, I don't know if he had his gun out or if he put it away or if he had his taser out. She's, by refusing to comply, she's making him use both hands. A lot of people will not see that and go, oh, man, he's using too much force and he's grabbing and he's pulling and he tackled her. And he, Look, she is causing, remember, the suspect causes what happens to them. It's not the cops just out looking for fun on a Saturday night. You better quit. You better quit. Why are you running? What? Why are you running? Because mom told me to. Okay, so she says my mom told me to. He asked her why she's running. Uh, that question was basically kind of to provoke a incriminating response. Uh, some would argue that she wasn't Mirandized and he couldn't do that. But he didn't ask her if she committed a crime. He just asked why she was running. And if she said, because I just stole my pills and I got a warrant, that would be better for the officer because it would confirm what he thinks he already knows. But she said, my mom told me she didn't admit to anything. Probably been through the system, educated career criminal, knows what to say and what not to say. She's still resisting the officers and not complying. What's your name? I think she gives her name as Tina. I think the grandma gave her name as Tina. So therefore, we know that Tina probably has a warrant. We think this is Tina. She ran from us. Plenty of reasons to handcuff her and take her into custody. Roll over. Back in the house. Roll over. Man, thank goodness for these EMTs. Let me tell you, they do a great stinking job in this. And in a minute, this EMT is going to take this gun from this cop. And uh, without this EMT, this dude's a freaking... He really came through in a clutch here and saved this cop's bacon. No pun intended. Rick, why are you picking on a cop calling him pig? I'm not. I'm just saying he saved his bacon. Quit being so pansy. Hello. Oh, this is great. I'm glad Robin. Thanks. One detained. Well over. Well over. I am okay, if not for the EMT, he's got one hand on his handcuffs. He's got the other hand talking on the radio. If the EMT wasn't there, this guy, I'm not sure he could get her into custody by himself. Uh, I, I talk about quota hires a lot, hiring people that aren't qualified because of some PC factor that they want to make you hire people for. Uh, you know, when you get when you lower the standard and hire cops that can't do the job because of other factors. This is what happens, and it causes people to get hurt. It causes incidents to go on longer than they should. It causes this, insula this incident right here to escalate. If the cop would have been able to grab her, put her in her custody, not mess around and start walking her back to the car, this whole thing might have been over very quickly. Roll over. Oh, Roll over and give me your hand. I wonder when she said when she was beeping. Hopefully YouTube doesn't start block beeping. Now they're going to start saying, well, beeping probably means they're saying a bad word. And since we don't want anybody hearing bad words, we should block beeping. Jesus. Ouch! Okay, we call that a clue. Shots are fired. Uh, what you guys don't know, unless you've watched this video and read what police activity posted, uh... A guy came out on a porch and goes, I got a gun, mother... Beep, 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 beep. And uh, so he pointed something. He kneeled down and took a shooting stance on the porch at this officer. And when the officer looked up, he saw this guy who just said, I have a gun, and he made a pointing stance. Is that a lawful shoot? Can you shoot somebody for that? Uh, a cop can. Can a citizen do it? You'd have a tougher road to follow because we all know there's double standards. Uh, a cop out there making an arrest and somebody said, I got a gun, motherfucker, and I'm going to kill you or something like that, and then takes a squatting stance, can you shoot him even though you don't see a gun? Nobody has said they found a gun and nobody said this guy had a gun. They're, they're talking about it like it was justified and it was a good shoot, but if there was no gun and the guy didn't have a gun, is the cop wrong? I'm okay with it personally because you point, a, you get down and shoot stance with me and say you got a gun, guess what? I'm believing you. If, if you're lying... Probably shouldn't have lied about that. So I'm okay with it. Will the courts be okay with it? Will other people be okay? I don't know. This cop reacted, 
He's by himself. He's out in the middle of a field. He doesn't have any backup. He's trying to take in an uncooperative suspect. A person says they have a gun. He's outnumbered. He returns fire, shoots, and retreats. Now, was retreating the best move? I'm not sure. Uh, leaving the poor EMT there. If he retreated, should he have ran back to his car and just taken cover and say, hey, man, I'm abandoning this. I can't handle it. Okay, he can do that. He doesn't do that. He ends up turning around and coming back. Give me help. Shots fired. Give me help. Okay, a little inexperience here. I can tell by his radio transmission is inexperienced. He's obviously gone into fight or flight. He's He was already breathing hard when he was chasing the woman. He was breathing hard when he was tackling her. He was breathing hard when he started shooting. Now he's in fight or flight. His heart rate just jumped 220 and he's running. So his heart rate is working triple time right now. And, he got, and, and he's not putting out a lot of information on the radio. He put out shots fired. I need help. That's good. He got that out. He got the cavalry coming. It would have been better had he articulated a little better. I mean, I'm not trying to say that this is why you articulate, but I want to give as much information as I can in case I end up dying. And you learn that the more incidents you've been in when you're chasing people and you know it can go bad and you've got guys with guns and you're chasing guys with guns, I always want to get out who the suspect was, what happened, what he looks like. what In case I end up dead, I want them to have as much information as they can to catch the guy. So it would have been better had he been running, saying, I got a white male pointing at me, saying he's going to kill me. He came out of the pink mobile home. He took a shooting stance. I fired shots. I got seven rounds. I've tried one. I need getting all that out gives the responding units more information. That comes with experience. That comes after you've done a few of these where you panicked. Again, in smaller towns, you may only get one or two of these incidents in your career. You're working in a large city with a lot of gangbangers. You get this usually nightly some one of your officers either involved in this if not two or three times a night so you're going to a lot of calls you're hearing other officers do it and you're getting experience and you understand what the process is a little bit better so when it happens to you you kind of go into reactionary mode when it when this is your first time which i'm guessing this is probably the first time this guy's been in a shooting he he, he doesn't put out as good as information as he could and i'm not cracking on the guy i'm just trying to use this as a learning Tool for younger cops, etc. Okay, so he's got great distance. He ran. EMTs are still working and, and detaining this person. These EMT guys, man. I'm not sure I would stay there if I was EMT. I might, as soon as shots fired, I'm out of there. I'm heading back to my ambulance. I don't have a gun. I'm not getting paid to shot at. I'm not going to be fodder. I don't care if this lady lays here or gets away. That ain't my concern. These EMTs stay right on it. Maybe a small county, maybe they work with the cops a lot. Um, these EMTs are freaking heroes all the way around. Um, maybe maybe even one of them's a nurse. Hell, maybe one's a bald nurse. You never know. I've got a guy with a gun. Give me some help. Shots fired. Okay, I don't think I see his finger on the trigger, which is a good thing. Um... He's still saying, I need some help. I got a guy on the ground. I got, dude, when you put out shots fired, sometimes it helps. Who fired, if anybody's hit, et cetera. Uh, if he put out, I fired, I returned fire on a suspect that pointed something at me. I don't know if he's got a gun. Again, that's more information, more uh, suspect description. Things like that will help you in case, if this guy has a heart attack and dies right now, I mean, luckily we have video. Before video, the only thing we had was the radio because that was recorded. So it's really critical. Now with video, maybe not so critical, but it's good to get in the habit of voicing. It forces you to breathe. It causes you to suck air in. This, this video has a whole bunch of training opportunities. It's going to get long, but the guys that want to watch it can hang around. We're driving, Justin. Shot fired. 58 got shot fired. You notice he's got a lot of distance. There's probably no doubt in anybody's mind that he's scared. Uh, creating, justifying to a court or a jury that this officer was in fear of his life, it's going to be pretty easy. It's not like he's standing there like the EMTs. Now, I would have a harder time convincing that the EMTs are fair to their life. <laughs> They're still hanging out in the, in the gunfire area with the woman. I, I don't get it. 95, 33. You better 
Mark, show me your f***ing hands! Heavy breathing, arms moving up and down, having a hard time focusing, tunnel vision. Can he see the sights clearly? Probably not. Can he see the suspect clearly? Maybe. Most people in threats, and anytime I've been in a high risk, I focus on the threat, on the gun, the knife, etc. Lots of police studies out there. People get shot in the hands a lot when cops shoot at them because the hands usually hold the weapon or the gun. And when you see one of those and you think it's going to kill you, your natural response is you end up focusing in tunnel vision and tunnel lock on that threat. So when you pull your gun, you usually just point and shoot, and you shoot what you're looking at, and most people stare. That's why when you do point shooting, it's good to pick a center spot on your target and just stare on something, either a button, a chain, a medallion. If you're working on paper targets or metal targets, you should hang or put a dot right in the center of that. And when you're shooting, you should focus right on that when you do your point shooting and just stare and lock on that. And you'll be amazed at how close you get when you draw and shoot fast when you're staring at a small place. Remember, aim small, miss small. Uh, if you're aiming at a big target, you're going to miss big. If you're aiming at a button on a shirt that a suspect is wearing, even if you miss, you're still going to probably hit the suspect. Okay, so this officer's hearing all these guys coming. They're talking about, I'm coming, I'm on my way. Of six, They're giving codes. So this is reassuring the officer a little bit. Okay, I know somebody's coming. You notice he's walking back very, very slowly and cautiously. Again, he's still in fight or flight. His body had this huge adrenaline jump. His heart rate is high. All these physical factors are happening to him. If he's never experiencing this before, it's sometimes a little scary. You don't know what's happening. You don't know. You get a little dizzy. You, you, things slow down. You're like, wow, it's almost like I've been in a car wreck and I'm seeing it in slow motion. Or, you know, all these things can be overwhelming, and this guy gets overwhelmed. Step out and show me your hands! Do it now! Do it now! Get the f out here! You dropped that thing! Walk over here! Walk over here! Do it now! I kind of sped it up just a little bit so we don't have time, but um, I'll slow it down when we get to the regular part. Get out here! Get the f on the ground! Get away from there! Get the f on the ground! Get the f on the ground! You better keep your f hands where I can see them! Okay, so again, he's lasering people here. He's dropping a gun. He's putting it up. He's dropping it. He's he's moving and he's doing things that, I mean, he's yelling at the guy to get on the ground, show me your hands. He's using foul language. Well, no kidding. I mean, that's just happens and stressful. People are like, well, he's not being very, he's actually violating policy. Police policy says you'll never use foul or aggressive language toward the public. He's in violation of policy. Are they going to write him up for that? No. Will they write him up if they want him because he violates some PC policy and he uses that? Absolutely. Because policy only gets enforced when agencies get called out. So they make policy about everything and they only enforce it when they want to. So did this guy violate policy by cussing at this dude? Absolutely. Every agency has a policy you won't cuss at the public. Are they going to charge him for that? No. Because they get to pick and choose who and when they enforce policy on. That's my problem with policy. Stay there. <laughs> You stay the f on the ground. You keep your hands where I can see them. Okay. <laughs> Poor EMT guys here. <laughs> Rick, why are you laughing? Because <laughs> it's kind of funny. This dude moves behind them and he's using them as cover. And I'm going to do a crazy cop story where I grabbed some dude by the neck when I saw a guy with a gun. I used him as a shield. <laughs> and if I did that today, I'd probably get all kind of heat. But anyway, uh, he's using these guys as a shield. He's getting behind them. He's tactically, he's smart. But he's kind of selling out the guys that are helping him by getting behind them. They got no gun, but he's using them as kind of bullet fodder. In case he gets shot at, he can get behind them. So he's putting them in between. I think the suspect is either here or here. And he's staying pretty much behind these guys while he's got the gun behind him, which is another critical error because in SWAT training or any type of high risk where you're doing entry training, 
we would always teach if a guy's bending down in front of you, your gun has to be forward of him. You don't point your gun of a guy bending over behind him because if he gets shot at or spooked and stands up, you'll end up shooting him in the back of the head. So anytime a guy got lower than you in front of you, your gun was in forward of him. So if he stood up unannounced, he would not get shot in the back of the head. This guy probably doesn't have any SWAT training, probably have not done a, whole, a lot of room entries, so he doesn't realize that. But if this guy jumps up and this guy pulls a gun and he shoots at the guy, he's going to shoot the guy in the back of the head. And you don't want to shoot your own people in the back of the head. It's just kind of not, not, not a good thing. We call that a clue, that something went wrong and the plan didn't go as planned. All right, here we go. <laughs> I notice hand tremors here. If you're looking close, he's shaking a little bit. His heart rate is still up. He's still screaming. You notice he's not really doing a whole bunch. He's he's trying to just survive and stay in the game. He's trying, I don't want to run away. I don't really want to abandon. I don't know what to do. I don't know. All I can do is just yell commands and wait for somebody to come. He's not doing a whole bunch else. I mean, he could have been, and again, I'm not cracking on a guy saying, I would have done it this way because I'm per I'm just saying, a better option Hey, you, EMT, grab that guy and back up. Head to my car. Follow me. Back away. Get in front of them so he can return fire and tell them to back away and drag her out of this wood. Create distance. He's allowing these EMT and this person on the ground to to stagnate or stagnate him in this field. And he, he's, he's in the open. It's a very untactical situation. He's a sitting duck out here. They're all sitting ducks, and they're not moving to cover. They're not creating distance. He's just yelling, which tells me all clues. He's not thinking clearly. He's kind of being overwhelmed with this. He's in fight or flight. His heart rate is up. He's shaking. He's lost minor muscle skills. His, his thought process is not working as normal, and he's just dealing with a whole bunch. I'm not saying this dude's bad or mean. I'm not trying to crack on it, people, and I, I don't want people to use this to beat up the guy, but this is a great learning tool. These two M2 guys, man, I mean, they're holding them down. They're facing the guy. They're in the line of fire. Dude, you guys need to switch jobs. Right, we're coming. <coughs> you better not move. That <laughs> you black <laughs> You shut the up. Okay, here's another thing I had a problem with. Again, and I think he's just doing this because he's he's mentally checked out. He's just trying to he's trying to handle as best he can. This girl starts running her mouth and saying F you and this and all this crap, and he starts getting an argument. I mean, he even drops his gun in a minute, I think, goes over there and either stands on her head or kicks her, and I'm like, dude, if you're really scared about the guy with the gun, forget what else. Keep focused on your threat. Do not get distracted. That's basic tactics, that's survival skills. You can't let things distract you from the threat. The biggest threat out here is the dude that pointed a gun or pointed something at you and said, I'm going to fucking kill you. He's the threat, not her mouth, not the EMT, not the girl handcuffed on the ground. But because of his mental faculties are so being tasked and overtasked, he gets distracted and starts dealing with her. Bad move. Hey, Shut the up! This EMT is staying more focused on the threat than the cop worrying about her telling her to shut up. Shut up. I've got him on the ground at gunpoint. I don't know what he did with it, but he's on the ground. Anybody wonder where his first shots went? I mean, he says he's got the guy at gunpoint, a pistol at this range. Not very accurate. He can probably lay down some suppressing fire. He can lay down some oh shit rounds. So maybe the guy will take cover and make it harder for him to aim on him. But at this distance with a pistol, he's not a real big threat to this guy. I guarantee you he's shaking and tremoring and running heart rate up. He's not going to be able to get a good sight picture, put his front dot on this person and stop the threat if he needed to. But he could lay down suppressive fire. <laughs> you keep your hands where I can see them. You better not move. Well, you just stay put. 
can't stand them. Okay, this guy goes in, and again, there may be nurses and doctors out there that can better explain this, but to me, this is a total panic attack. EMT recognizes it immediately that this guy is losing it, and he abandons this woman and goes over and tries to help him. And I don't know if this guy abandons or the other EMT. Maybe the other EMT already sees this is happening. I'm assuming he's got a thousand yard scare, a stare. He's not focusing on anything. You can hear him start hyperventilating, uh, breathing hard. Uh, uh, I think he's crying. I can't tell if he's just emotionally broke down, but he totally loses it and he is ineffective. Now, I've seen guys lose it after they shoot somebody and after the threat's over and we get them to the side and we move them away from everything and they're, they're just like, shit, I can't believe I killed somebody and start crying. Oh my God, I want to call my family. I made it. I'm alive. I just had to kill somebody I didn't want to. So all this is overwhelming. PTSD, whatever it is, post-traumatic stress, whatever, whatever you want to call it, this massive emotional and physical attack on the body in a fight or flight is very, very difficult unless you do it every day. And then when you do it every day, you become addicted to it. It becomes adrenaline junkie. You look for that stress. You look for that feed. It's like a heroin addict looking for that adrenaline pump. And guys that work, and I've been there where we worked on these high-risk things, our whole job was to go out there and get into something because we knew it was going to happen. And it almost like we looked forward to it because we knew we were going to live. It was like warriors looking for the fight so we can win. And... After you do that a long time, you get better at dealing with it. It doesn't affect you the same. Uh, but when you only deal with it once in a while or maybe once or twice in your life, it can be immobilizing. And this guy, it went immobilizing. Pull it together, man. Pull it together. Pull it together, man. Come here. Pull it together, man. Pull it together. Pull it together. Look at me. Look at me. This EMT did a great job. He's telling him to pull together. He's talking to him. He's trying to bring him back. He knows he's lost it. He knows he's checked out. He's trying to make physical contact with him, which is really good. I've said this before in our videos. When we walk up with an officer involved in a shooting, if we're the first one there and he's still got people at gunpoint and he's shaking and he's got, there's multiple suspects. I got one at gunpoint. We will walk up and literally put your hand and on the guy's weapon and hands and make physical contact and say, hey, it's me. And you want to block that hand because sometimes when you touch somebody that's checked out, their initial immediate response is to swing the gun on you. And you don't want the gun coming on you. So when somebody is in a shooting or high risk and they're very hyper-focused, you want to make sure you can block that gun for what I call a swing around because when you touch him, he's got auditory exclusion. He's not going to hear you approach him. He's not going to hear you say, yo, man, I got a friendly. I'm behind you. I'm coming up. Don't turn on me. I'm coming up. I'm a friendly. He'll have total auditory exclusion, will not hear any of that. He'll just hear muffled noises, and when you touch him the first time, he'll swing that gun on you. So always be ready to block that gun or block that swing around if you touch somebody who's like this. This guy does a pretty good job. He grabs his left hand, and then he ends up grabbing a gun to prevent that gun from swinging on him. This EMT just does a fantastic job of trying to talk. I can't give this guy enough credit. Give me that gun. Give me your gun. Give me your gun. Give me your gun, sir. Give me your gun. I'm with the ambulance service. Give me your gun. He's got the barrel and he's pointing away. Very good move. Uh, he doesn't want this gun swinging on him. He doesn't want this guy who's checked out to maybe check in real quick and think he's being attacked and shoot him. So having blocking this gun and having a great, great move by this dude. I don't know if he did it intentionally. I don't know if his if survival skills just kicked in and he's just got good common sense and went, you know what, I don't want this guy, I don't want this guy freaking out pointing a gun at me. Just a really good job. Good. Give me your gun. Let go. Let go. Good job. Took the gun from the guy who's out of it. Uh, he didn't get in a fight with him. He talked him out of his gun. The guy who was hyperventilating, the cop, was so out of it, he gave it up pretty much without a fight, which is a good thing. Uh, very, very tough situation. This EMT, when he gets the gun, man, this EMT just, good job, dude, stays in the fight. He puts the gun on a threat, and he still orders the guy. He doesn't want to give the guy with the gun 
the the option or the knowledge to go, oh man, the cop just lost the gun. Now I can make my move. EMT takes the gun, still tries to have command presence, points the gun at the suspect, and tells him to stay on the ground. Great freaking job. So now this EMT, you got one EMT dealing with the suspect, you got another EMT that took the gun, you got the Kai Popper ventilating, having a panic attack. They called it a cardiac uh, event. Again, I'm not sure if they're just trying to not say panic attack. Maybe it wasn't a panic attack. I don't know. They're calling it a cardiac event. So he's shaking, he's tremors, he gave up his gun, he's totally out of it. I'm not sure I would have gave the gun back to him, but this EMT ends up giving him his gun back. Easy, buddy. Easy, buddy. So this EMT again, multitasking, going back and forth. He's going at the suspect. Don't fucking move! Having command present, turning around to the guy in a panic attack. Hey, guy, easy, I got you. So he's really doing a great job of escalating on a suspect, de-escalating on a cop, having a panic attack. He's trying to control this whole situation. This dude's a freaking hero. Buddy. Easy, buddy. I got it. I got under control. You just calm down, man. Don't move! Easy, buddy. Now, this hyperventilating you're hearing, this, this voice, I mean, I'm thinking, and again, I'm no medical expert. Somebody's going to come here. You don't know what you're talking about. You're right. I don't. I'm just telling you from being experienced, seeing cops go through this and seeing this, I'm thinking the body is taking over a little bit and saying, look, he's so overwhelmed mentally, he can't think, he's got this adrenaline pump, his heart rate's way high, he's ran, he's not moving, we gave him this adrenaline, he's shaking, he's got tunnel vision, he's still scared, he doesn't have any help, he's losing it, he's mentally blacking out. I think his body took over and went, dude, we need to shut down everything and just get oxygen, otherwise this, our body's going to black out, and we don't want the body blacking out because that's probably a bad thing. If we're being attacked in fight or flight, the body can get eating if he's not awake. So I think the body, subconsciously, something mentally, physically, whatever happened, chemically, shut him down and what we need to take away his thinking and put all efforts to keep oxygen in and make him breathe. And his hands kind of rolled up. He lost the ability. Uh, he probably lost feeling. He was having tingling. It's, it's like your hands and feet go to sleep because all the blood leaves. The cop, that could have made it worse for the cop. He was thinking, oh, my God, what's going on? The cop could have known he was having a heart attack and went, oh, my God, I can't stand this. I've got to lower my heart rate. Maybe his heart attack was, if we don't lower this guy's heart rate, he's going to die. We have to disengage and shut him off mentally. So a lot of things happen that we don't understand or can't explain. But from all my research and, and knowledge on fight or flight and the effects, that's what I kind of think is going on. Easy, man. Calm down. It's okay, buddy. We got this under control. We got your back, man. Don't worry about it. You shut the up. You shut the up. We got it, man. We got it. It's all under control. Don! Watch yourself. God, I need you over here now. I got him, Todd, Todd, over here now. You hear the voicing, the, the forced air in and out, uh, uh, breathing. I mean, is he fighting for air because he had a heart attack? Is his, is his heart overwhelmed? Uh, is he just struggling to stay standing? Uh, again, a lot going on in the body that we just don't know. So, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to use this as a hate video and call this cop all kind of names and blah, blah. But you know what? Till you've been in a few of these situations, it's, it's pretty weird. Easy, buddy. It's okay. Buddy. It's okay. It's just a stressful situation. It's okay. We got your back. EMT's got a one-handed stance, not a good stance. The reason he's got a one-handed stance, I think his other hand's on the guy, trying to hold him out and comfort him. So he's only got a one-handed stance. This, this EMT is doing very good at multitasking, divided attention. He's got attention here. He's got a threat. He's got the gun. He's trying to hold this guy. This guy's holding the suspect. He's directing units coming in. Man, great freaking job, EMT. Ho hopefully he's a ball nurse so I can get some props for picking on a, or giving props to a bald nurse. Man, it's okay. <sighs> Tom, I'm okay. I'm okay. You okay? Yeah. You, I got it. I'm, got I'm it. okay. I swear. Okay. He got his breath. The cop said, I got it. He started talking. Before, the cop wasn't able to talk. The, to the cop was able to say, I've got it. I I've got it. 
and the EMT gave him his gun. I, and again, I, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not sure I'd have gave it back to him, but the EMT is probably thinking, shit, I've got this guy in suspect, I've got a pussy on the ground, he's got a gun, do I really want to get in a fight over this guy if he wants his gun and start fighting a cop for his gun? Is this guy going to fight me? Is he in the right frame? Should I keep his gun? Should I not? There's still a guy over here with a gun. I mean, there's just so much going on. So to say the cop, the EMT should not have given his gun back, eh, uh, you know, I, I'm saying I'm not real sure he should have gave it back, but I'm not saying he did it wrong because he gave it back. Uh, just a lot of a lot of things here. If you want to go to the video, I'll put a link to it. It's on police activity. Uh, really great listens. I know I went long. It's 35 minutes. This is a absolute great training video for new young officers who never experienced this, who don't have to deal with situations like this weekly, daily, every night, who don't go to these large metropolitan cities with large Democrat population to cause high crime and high violence and you're dealing with gun calls all the time and you're taking guns off people you have a different mindset and you're able to deal with this better when you see it experience you watch other officers go through it you respond to it, it it's it's a learning process remember being a perfect or good at anything is not an event it's a process and this cop probably got his first experience at it and and he will get better if he hangs around he may have an epiphany and go you know what I'm done I don't want to do this again my heart can't handle it I don't like it I don't I don't deal with it well I don't need to do this I'm gonna find another job he may quit he may stay on the job they may fire him they may send him to shrink and say hey pain attack we're gonna keep him on I don't know what the outcome is gonna be I'm not saying I wish one way or the other I'm just saying this is a great thing to deal with. Remember, when, you, when you're forced to make fight or flight or emergency decisions, you have to process the danger. You have to process all the options. You have to develop options on what to do. Then you have to process which one is better, and then you have to enact the best solution. And the more you do it, the quicker you get at it. The more you've planned before, the quicker you can enact your options. If you don't have any options, you have to start formulating off. That creates time, lag time. Usually the fight's over, you're dead, shot, or it's too late. So this guy has never had to process this. He's not as quick at it. It doesn't come as need, uh, you know, as easy. I'm not saying it's good or bad. Great learning tool. Uh, share this video. I, I'm not going to be able to put ads on it. They're going to say it's bad. So I'm, it's not, I'm not trying to share you for money. I'm trying to share to get this process out so people who want to understand the stresses and what goes on in these events will hopefully get a little education. I'll put a link in the description to my fight or flight page. I have a lot of medical information. If you read that page, it goes through a lot of what I'm talking about and will help you understand it better. All right, we'll end that there.